they behave like fluids because they, they flow when you push on them in a certain way. So what do you think about when you think about mechanics? The study of motion. The study of motion. Great. Who said that? Ah, there. Right. Okay. Force is an energy to characterize motion. And, and if you start with a physics class, you'll learn about planets and planetary motion, and that's often called celestial mechanics. But you could take a course in fluid mechanics. I could take this material and bend it slightly. Yeah, that would be called solid mechanics. Right? You could uh, take a course in thermodynamics where people think about statistical sides of that topic. You've heard the term thermodynamics in your physics course. That, uh, that topic would be called statistical mechanics. And if you study the atom and the structures that make up an atom, you'd study quantum mechanics. All of these subjects in some ways get interrelated, and it's sort of beautiful to think that if you go to the university over a few years, you could study all of these topics and learn them and maybe even see how they might relate. I have studied physics my whole life, he said. I did not know your formula. Give me credit for this whole formula. I did not know your formula. And then he said, but I recently had heart bypass surgery, and it is the most important formula mm -hmm. in my life. And I thought it was really wonderful because it pointed another thing out. Who's sitting next to Henri Poincaré? Marie Curie, one of the, the first person ever to win two Nobel Prizes. The remarkable. Okay, so I'll tell you more about the picture in a second. So here's um, Henri Poincaré talking about what beauty is. Okay, uh, this beautiful quote, I'll kind of read it, it is slightly changed. The scientist does not study nature because, because it is useful to do so. The scientist studies it because he takes pleasure in it, and the scientist takes pleasure in it because it is beautiful. If nature were not beautiful, it would not be worth knowing, and life would not be worth living. I am not speaking, of course, of beauty which strikes the senses, or of the beauty of quality and appearances. What I mean is that more intimate beauty which comes from the harmonious order of its parts, and which an intelligent person can grasp. I think if you um, appreciate this idea, you'd see why a quantitative person would see a proof like this of the theorem of Pythagoras and say, that's beautiful. They see simple ideas and they grasp it as beautiful. Okay, so this is a famous photograph because it was one of the first, it was sort of the first major conference that was international in physics. I didn't show you everyone, so there's Marie Curie and Henri Poincaré sitting behind them, or a couple of famous people, including Albert Einstein, who didn't get a seat at the table. And, uh, the whole list is shown here. There are your textbooks in physics and uh, chemistry. Maybe, uh, and I think this is a wonderful uh, quote. So I'll just leave you with the following idea. It comes from uh, late Professor Donald Stokes, who was a professor at Princeton. You might have the idea, if you're trained in certain fields, that there's sort of a, a linear uh, graph that goes from uh, basic ideas, fundamental ideas, up to applications. I can say the fundamental ideas are the true scientists of the world and the applications are the engineers and the builders. But Donald Stokes disagreed with that. He said the world is not one dimensional in its intellectual ideas. The world is two dimensional in its intellectual ideas. And what you should really ask is, um, is what you're thinking about useful? So he calls that consideration of use. Not very useful on the left, very useful on the right. Okay. On the vertical axis he says, how much do you want to achieve fundamental understanding about the world? You don't care about fundamental understanding, that's in the lower left. You only care about fundamental understanding in the upper right. He associates people with each one. Oh, by the way, it's clear where you do not want to be. <laughs> where don't you be? Probably being in the lower left is not a very good way to spend your time. Okay, so it turns out he puts Niels Bohr in the upper left, so when they focus purely on fundamental ideas. Niels Bohr's grandson is a fluid mechanician. He's a friend of many of us. Uh, he, puts, he puts the great inventor Thomas Edison on the right, someone who invented all kinds of things that changed the world, but didn't care so much, didn't pay attention to fundamentals, which also affected what he did. And he puts the person I introduced to you, Louis Pasteur, in the upper right, because part of the time he was inventing new ideas in fundamental chemistry, and other times he was uh, curing the world with uh, early uh, vaccines and other ideas related to health. Okay, so with that, I'll just close. I'll say, you know, if you like science, math, and engineering, then you have an opportunity in front of you. If you like puzzles, you have an opportunity uh, in front of you because research is full of these. 
Uh, you could ask, do you want to be engaged in some of the most important questions that influence the way we live? Science and engineering, math are ways to approach that. And if so, I would say um, I wish you all the best in your next steps in education. Not only uh, am I jealous that you'll have all this opportunity to learn, but I'm hoping that you'll have a lot of fun.